In section 2.2, we start getting into other kinds of models that we can build to find trends in data. Just like we built linear models in section 2.1, in the remaining sections in this chapter, we're going to talk about models that are not straight lines, but more complicated curves. And the first example of that is what's called a quadratic model. And you can read this introduction to get a sense of why we need this, but we've already seen examples where linear models, if we try to extend them too far, can give us some pretty ridiculous results. So we need more sophisticated models, um, and one of them is these quadratic ones. The first uh, section here just sort of introduces the idea of what a quadratic model looks like. It's one that follows this arc shape, which we call a parabola. And you can read through this description, but basically when you have something with a square value, if you square a number and you keep doing this, you start to see this curve, a uh, special type of curve, emerge when you draw the picture. So again, you can read through this description and you'll see basically the very quick, quick introduction to uh, what a quadratic model looks like. And uh, with an example of different shapes that you might run across that are all that same basic overall pattern of a uh, parabolic arc. So the uh, thing to pay attention to here is this formula. This is the model form. It's going to have a t squared plus b t plus c. a, b, and c are going to be the three values we're going to find. Just like in a linear model we had um, two unknowns to solve for, here we have three of them, a, b, and c. And so when we use our calculator, for instance, we'll find values for a, b, and c, and then we'll just fill them in to fit that model. And you'll see that in the examples. So there's one example here of just using your calculator to plot points. Of course, you can also use Excel or Desmos or anything else like that uh, to plot points. And the goal here is just to observe that curved trend that looks quadratic and sort of to recognize that. Um, when it comes to what kind of model to pick, it takes a little bit of experience to know how to pick whether to use a linear model or quadratic or so on. Now for you in this class you don't have to worry about that because you'll be asked in a specific question find a linear model or find a quadratic model. So you don't have to decide what type to use, but if you were going to do something like that you would usually start by graphing the data and looking to see if one type of trend is likely to make more sense than another. So you can follow this example to see just how to plot points on your calculator. And you can see the results down here below and it kind of looks like that curve. You could also imagine drawing a straight line to match this trend and in this case you might get decent results with both versions but if you went further on on this trend it's likely that the parabola is going to be more accurate than a straight line. Then the next example is how to use your calculator to find that quadratic model. We're not going to ever do it by hand with quadratic models because the algebra gets more complicated and so that's kind of beyond uh, what I expect you to do in this course. So we're only going to use the calculator for it. So you can use um, your graphing calculator. You can also use Desmos just like we saw with the uh, linear models. You do the exact same thing except you set up a quadratic form instead of a linear form and it'll find the values A, B, and C for you. Uh, so look through this example carefully. This is an important one for um, plotting the data and then finding the model that fits it. Now you already know how to find a linear regression model. The quadratic regression model is right next to it in the menu so you can follow much of the same process and you'll get the values for A, B, and C given to you which will fill out your model. And then <clears throat> once we have a model like that we will generally do the same two types of questions that we did in section one. In other words, once we have a model like this, we can either be given a value of t and asked what's the amount at this point in time. And so we plug in t in two places and do the arithmetic to simplify all this. That's one question. The other question is where we're given an amount that'll go over here on the left and asked to solve for t. 
So both of those questions we saw in section one, and both of them are also here in section two. So follow this example carefully. The process for doing those two is similar to what we did in section one, especially when you're solving for t, we're not gonna do it by hand here. We're just gonna use that graphing approach where we uh, plot the horizontal line and look for where they cross. And so you can follow that example carefully. You should watch the video for it and, and make sure you can go through it um, specifically and understand all the parts because if you can do this type of problem, you can do everything in this section on the homework. So this is kind of the, the core um, functionality from this chapter. As long as you can do these parts using either your calculator or Excel or Desmos, any one of those is fine. Um, but you need to be sure that you can do these things because that's what the homework all revolves around. So that's a big example. And um, notice that when we look for where, what point in time we reach a certain value, we actually get two answers because this curve comes back and bends back around on itself. Um, so that's kind of an interesting thing that you wouldn't see with a linear model. And then here at the end, I have a little description of how to use Excel to do the same thing. If you'd like to use Excel instead of your graphing calculator, and then of course you can use Desmos in the same way that we did in section 2.1. So that's about it for 2.2. There's not a lot of new stuff other than this new formula, but the process and the principles are very similar to what we did with linear models in section 2.1.